All right, today we are going to uh, implement an optimization problem. We'll do like the hello world, uh, in other words, a getting started problem to get us familiar with doing uh, or to actually implementing a problem. And, and in this video, we'll be doing this in MATLAB. So I've got a, a MATLAB window open up here. Um, you'll need to have the optimization toolbox. Uh, if you're uh, on BYU campus, that we have access to that. If you have the student edition, that also comes with it. You may just have to go and add it if uh, potentially, but um, in any case, uh, let's start. I'm gonna just clear everything out, close all the windows, clear my output. Okay, so what I wanna solve here is an unconstrained problem, this function here on the right. It's a function of two variables and don't get hung up on the fact that it's a simple expression. Imagine this could be this huge long thing, you know, thousands of lines of code or whatever it is, it's your engineering analysis. But from the optimization point of view for an unconstrained problem, I always just have some f of x. x is in general a vector, can have many components. These are all the design variables I wanna change and then it's gonna return an objective, a scalar, something that I want to optimize. So I give it a bunch of design variables, I get out an F, and again, it doesn't need to be this simple explicit thing, it could be this big long thing, but for our example, we're just gonna keep it really short. Okay, so I'm gonna define that function. I'm gonna call it Rosenbrock because this function actually has a name, it's actually called the Rosenbrock function. Um, and let's see, let's do, write MATLAB syntax here. So f is equal to um, one minus x one squared plus a hundred times x two minus x one squared and then that whole quantity squared. Okay, hopefully I did that right. So you could define this function in another file if you want. Um, because I'm only using it in this file. MATLAB doesn't allow you to access the other files, but I'm only gonna use it in this script if I define it here, and so this will work fine. Okay, so this is the function I wanna optimize. Actually, let's just run it. Um, let's just call this temp. Okay, so I ran it, and let's just make sure it works. Let's just um, call Rosenbrock, and let's give it a point, like uh, two, three, or whatever. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't really have to be a semicolon. It doesn't matter in this case. Actually, and I want to print it out. So there, print it out an answer. That's what the Rosenbrock function evaluates at that point. Um, and I can just put in different points. So if I was doing this manually, right, and I didn't have the optimizer, I might just, you know, I could just keep trying things here. And um, if it's like this black box, and then just try and figure out where the minimum is. And you can imagine that's going to be pretty difficult. Now in this case, it's just two variables, so I could easily plot it and figure it out. But imagine I've got 10, 100 variables. I can't really plot that. And so I may not be able to do more than just, you know, sort of this guess and check and try to find a better solution. Okay, but we're in optimization, so we're going to try to actually optimize this. <clears throat> Let's, um, the function we're going to use is called fminunc. Uh, it's f min, so that means function minimization, and the unc is for unconstrained. So if I open up the docs for that, um, open up this window here, shows me the function signature I need. Um, it, I have to give it a function and a starting point at a minimum, right? And there's also some options I can give it, but we'll worry about that later. And it can return various things. At least it's gonna return the optimal x. Usually I also want the optimal f. Um, and I may want some of these other things that we'll talk about later, but for now, we'll just look at those two outputs. So uh, it's set up to minimize a function. We can see that here. It says it starts at the point x0 and attempts to find a local minimum of the function described in fun. The point x can be a scalar, a vector, or a matrix. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what does the function look like? Let's click on fun. So this is a function to minimize. Um, it says I need to write it like this. It's some function that takes in X and spits out F. That's exactly what we already did. So we've got a function that looks like that. Uh, and when we pass it in, we have to give it a function handle. So we have to write this at sign here. So I'm just gonna kind of copy and paste this line here. I don't wanna randomly call Rosenbrock anymore. I'm gonna optimize. I'm gonna call Rosenbrock. I need to give it a starting point 
and it's going to return uh, x, the x, the optimal x, and the optimal f. I'm going to call these x star and f star. That's pretty typical in optimization nomenclature to uh, call the optimized value with the star. Okay, so got everything I need except for a starting point. So let's just say we started at um, three, three, uh, whatever. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that semicolon off because I want to print this out and see what happens. Okay, so ran, it says local minimum was found. Uh, it was completed because the size of the gradient was less than the value of the optimality tolerance. That statement will make more sense later as we get into it. But for now, we know that it found a minimum. It said the solution is one, one, and the optimal F that goes with that is, is zero, right? I mean, based on some tolerance, this is not exactly machine precision. And some of you, uh, you know, may have noticed you could figure this one out. This one's simple enough. You could figure this out just by inspection. You can see there's two squared count quantities. So this is always going to be a positive number. So the smallest I can get is zero. And that's going to happen when x1 is one. That'll make this term zero. And then x2 is equal to also one. I'll make this term zero. So indeed, we did solve this uh, correctly. So that's great. Um, this is what the function looks like. And again, normally we can't visualize our problems because they're going to have, you know, dozens of, of design variables. So you can't plot it. But with two variables, we can. You can plot those two variables. Uh, we've got this long, sort of banana-shaped valley. This is why this is sometimes used as a, a starting problem because it's uh, two variables, so it's easy to visualize what's happening. But it's a uh, uh, somewhat challenging because you have this long, narrow valley that you got to search in. And the minimums right here at one one. So there's these very steep sides. You could think of this as this big canyon walls and this sort of narrow valley that you're trying to find the minimum in. Okay, so let's make this problem more interesting. Let's take the same problem and then let's add these constraints. And these are just some constraints I made up. Um, I made them up so they'll at least be active. We know, for example, that one one isn't going to work at least for this cons one, because that's gonna give me something that's gonna not satisfy this constraint. One plus one will not be less than or equal to one. So we need to use a new function. Uh, in this case, we're going to use something called f min con. Again, function minimization, but for constrained problems instead of unconstrained. So let's uh, yeah, let's open that up. And you can see it's quite a bit longer. Um, I need to enter a bunch more things now, um, but the outputs are going are the same type of things. So you can see this is uh, what it does. It's going to find the minimum of f such that we have inequality constraints, equality constraints. And then these are what are called linear constraints. Um, most of the time, uh, we won't use those very frequently. So we're just going to uh, ignore those. We have to put something in there. We'll have to put some empty brackets. But that's what all these a's and b's are. They're for linear constraints. And then lb and ub, this is lower bound and upper bound. These are for my bound constraints. All right, so that's the problem that I need. So let's see, I've already got my function. I've already got x0. And I already said a, b, and all these a's and b's are nothing. So let's just change that. This is f min con. And then uh, all these a's and b's, I can just put in empty brackets because I don't have any linear constraints. OK, so I've gotten these done. Now I need lower bound and upper bound. OK, so I'm going to put that in. And then the last one, uh, this is a constraint function. So I'm just going to, uh, we'll see what that looks like in a second. But for now, I'm just going to uh, put in con for constraints. Just, just like Rosenbrock was the name of my function, con is going to be the name of my constraints. And I'm going to have to write a function for that. OK, but otherwise, it's going to be pretty similar. Uh, since I'm kind of running out of room, I'm going to move these brackets in closer just so we can see everything. All right. Um, so I needed to find some bounds. I didn't actually say there were any bounds in here. Um, actually, I'm kind of curious what happens if I don't give it bounds, if it, what it will do. Let's see if I can click on those. Lower bound, upper bound. Lower bound. Seems like it may want me to give something. Not sure I can avoid putting anything in there. So if you have no constraints, typically what we do is just put in really large values, right? That aren't going to bound the problem. 
Um, okay, yeah, here it says, if no, uh, yeah, if no bounds exist, set LB to an empty bracket and or UB to an empty bracket. Okay, so in our case, yeah, we don't we don't have any bounds, so I'm just gonna get rid of those two. Okay, so basically all we have to do now is just add one thing, a constraint function. So let's define that function, uh, and I'm not sure what to return yet. So let's go look at it. Nonlinear constraint function. So it says it want a fun it wants a function that looks like this. It takes in x and it's going to return c, which are the nonlinear inequality constraints. These are the inequality constraints, and then c quality are the equality constraints. And we don't have any equality constraints. Both of these have inequalities. Okay, and let's see what else does it say about it. So this is an array. These are an array of constraints. So in my case, c equality is going to be nothing. And C is going to be an array of two numbers. For our objective, we had one objective, so we return one number. For our constraints, I've got two constraints, so I have to return two numbers. So C and C equality. And C equality, we just said, is we don't have any. So C uh, is two numbers, so I'm just going to initialize it to be an array of size two. And actually, let's see. Uh, it doesn't matter which way I do it, but let's just do it like that. The first constraint is x uh, one squared plus x two squared. And we have to check what's the format that it's expecting here. So let's go back to the documentation. It says I need it in the form that c of x is less than or equal to zero. That's not exactly what I have here. So I need to move everything over. So I'm gonna have x one squared plus x two squared minus one is less than or equal to zero. So that whole thing on the left with the minus one that's going to be the value that I give it for C here. Okay, so I need to put in a minus one. And then my second constraint, that's x1 plus three times x2, and then I've got to subtract that five to move it to the other side. Okay, so now I've given it my constraints, and that should be it. I should be able to run it, and there it is. And let me check to see if I got the right answer here. Yep, that's the right answer. So we solve this problem correctly. Notice that it's not one, one, it's at a different point. And my objective is not as low. It couldn't get to zero, zero, right? Cause there's now this constraint that's stopping it. Specifically that first one is, um, we could see which ones were active, for example. Um, let's see, is it gonna let me, it doesn't allow me to call con, I don't think. Cause it's, I didn't define it in a separate function. So I'm just gonna call it right here. So I'm just calling my constraint afterwards and we can see the first function, first constraint is active. This one right at the limit of zero. This one is not active. It's less than or equal to zero. So this first constraint was active. The second constraint was inactive. Um, one other thing that would be helpful uh, is to maybe look at some of the options. So let's go back to the documentation. We will get way more of the options later uh, as things make more sense. But for now, there may be one that's helpful. Let's go down here to uh, this last one, you can see there's one more argument I can add options. And it says I need to use this function, optim options. Um, I put in a solver's name and then a bunch of key value pairs. So you can see some examples here, um, fmin con, and then I can give it a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of copy and paste this one here. Options, I call that function, optim options. I'm giving options for fmin con, and then this is where I put all the options. And then I got to pass this into this function. That's the last thing I need. So let's go back um, here and look at what the options are. For fmin con, there are tons, lots of options. We'll look at them. Um, these will make more sense over time as we start getting into the algorithms. But one that I think is useful generally is this one about display. The default is off, meaning you see nothing. You just got the end result and. Uh, as an optimization user, that's not particularly helpful because we kind of want to know what's going on, and especially as our problems get harder and they don't just solve so quickly. You know, they may take many minutes or hours to run and we want to see if we're making good progress. So it's good to display. Uh, so I often use this uh, detailed iteration here, for example. So let's do that. Um, let's, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste that. Display is the, uh, the argument here and 
Oops, and we're going to say that in split we want is a detailed iterate. Okay, so if I run that again, uh, still really fast, you can see it's displaying every iteration. So at every iteration, how many of the functions been called, what my current objective value is, uh, what feasibility is. We'll talk about these more later. But this is if the constraints are satisfied and they're not until they get down to zero. First order optimality, that's again something we'll talk about later, but we want that to go to zero as it does. Uh, the norm of the steps is how big of a step size. All these things will make more sense later. But the point here is that now I can see the progress and, I, and, and you know, this value, the objective, you can see is steadily uh, sort of decreasing until we get to our converged value and it's satisfied the criteria. It's feasible, satisfied the optimality criteria. And so we got our solution. Okay, so that's it for now. This is the hello world problem. Um, I'd encourage you to try it on your own. Make sure you can do uh, set up an optimization problem of your own.